Today, Cliff Diving's Elite takes on new territory in one of the oldest cities in the world and the largest in its country. Welcome to Beirut, everyone. Lebanon for stop number five of the 2019 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, where the divers will launch directly from the pure cliff face off the natural landmark of Arauche, also known as the Pigeon Rocks, a popular local attraction that will serve as the main stage for acrobatic excellence today. Trace Worthington here alongside Joey Zuber. Thanks a lot for joining us live from Beirut. And Joey, I am guessing today is going to be interesting and very unpredictable being a new location for these divers here in Beirut. Yes, it is. It's always a treat to come to a new location for the first time to experience a new culture and discover the cliff diving landscape here. And honestly, Trace, we've had a fantastic time here in Beirut so far. Now, it's also important to mention it's been a varied season this year in terms of the conditions. We've experienced the extreme cold in Dublin Island, the wild Atlantic seas in Portugal, and of course, the hot conditions here in the Middle East in Beirut. Now, speaking of hot conditions, the World Series kicked off in a very warm climate and that was in the Philippines. What a stop that was. It was their first time ever hosting. And then Dublin, Ireland hosted stop number two, followed by Polignano Amare, Italy. And then the last stop took place in the Portugal's Azores Islands. That leads us to here in Beirut, Lebanon, one of three new locations. Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina is next off the old bridge, then Bilbao, Spain. We'll host the season finale where the King Kai Keeley trophies will be presented to the top male and female divers of this 2019 World Series. And Joey, today's the second straight event and a third time this season where the divers launch directly from the cliff face. Crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> and personally, I love these off the cliff events. It's raw and adventurous. And speaking of adventure, just getting to the dive point was totally wild <laughs> with the athletes having to zip line from the mainland to that monolithic cliff face and also Trace, they've also got to scale down that sheer cliff face to get into those off the cliff dive points. Incredible Incredible, footage, huh? arduous just getting there. We are about to get this started with the women's final round, but first, if you are new to the sport, this is Red Bull Cliff Diving and this is how it works. This is not a sport for the faint-hearted. Divers take off from up to 27 meters or 90 feet, the same as an eight-story building. Performing a complex series of twists and somersaults, they are scored by five international judges. In just three seconds in the air, the divers can reach speeds of up to 85 kilometers per hour or 53 miles per hour. Scores are added across two days of competition to give an overall total. That is what you call a real entry. To earn these scores, divers must perform four different dives of varying degrees of difficulty. Oh. Sensational. This is just insane. <laughs> I'm in the bottom. The male and female divers with the highest total scores win the event. And after all seven events around the world have been completed, the divers with the most series points will be awarded the King Karkili Trophy as the 2019 World Series Champion. This is Red Bull Cliff Diving. That's how it works. Okay, three stops left. Joey, bring us up to speed on what has happened so far this season. Watching Jonathan Perez, and he showed near perfect cliff diving in Portugal. Six tens in one competition to set a new record. But even with these scores, it still wasn't enough to beat Gary Hunt, who's riding the wave of confidence right now. Gary he has a commanding lead in the series so far. But I think the defining factor of his lead can be attributed to the higher degree of difficulty combined with those consistently high scores from the judges. Great camaraderie between all the athletes, as you can see there, between Jonathan and Gary. And with the women, we have an almost identical situation with Rihanna Nifland winning five competitions in a row, which is also a record for the women. She's definitely an athlete that knows how to right. perform when it counts, Trace. 
You know, and, and you look at the, the champions, and it, it's amazing, their stats. And you look at the comparison with Rihanna Nifflin and Gary Hunt. I mean, Gary Hunt, 76 starts. He's never missed. He's the only athlete who's never missed a World Series start. 76 of them, 37 wins. And that's a 48% strike ratio for the top of the podium. Rihanna Nifflin, in her short career, 21 starts, 15 wins, over a 70 percent strike rate to stand on top of that podium that's crazy and respectable in any sport absolutely remarkable statistics for both of those incredible athletes and we can also point out why they're so good in my opinion i think they're mentally strong they've also got a great technical diving background rhiannon comes from a trampolining background as well but importantly in my opinion the capacity to to handle pressure in the competitions is very, very important. And Rhiannon Ifland uh, leads the way as far as the world rankings and coming into this event. She's four for four undefeated this season, making a, a record five straight wins. When you factor in the final stop of last season, which is a new all-time record set on the women's side. So she's pretty good, Joey. <laughs> 230 points behind is Canadian R Lisanne Richard. She is out of this competition because of injury, which opens up the door wide open with 600 points left on the table between this competition and the last. Three stops left, 600 points on the table. So, all right, we normally have four rounds of diving at each stop, but here in Beirut, the officials have altered it to three rounds because of the high waves and extreme conditions early on. Regardless, the scores from each round are all added together for the grand total. That being said, Joey, two of three dives for the women have been completed, so get us up to speed on the highlights in the earlier rounds for the women. Now the highlight, the zip line there once again. Edith Smith bowed round one off the cliff. Fine diving from her, a nine and a half and a nine from the judges. So after round one, she was in third position. <laughs> Look at that footage, it never ceases to, su to surprise me. Adriana Jimenez from Mexico, round one, breaking a new record, 74.10 for the highest scoring required dive. So she was in the lead after round one there. Superb effort, and Rhiannon Ifland, check this dive out. One of the hardest dives we've got from the women. Back triple somersault, double twist, pow. Guess what? Yet another record broken in this competition. 122.55. Rihanna Nifland never ceases to amaze us. Constantly breaking records. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it is absolutely huge. And that just happened, Joey, in that last round dive before we get into the final. So Rihanna Nifland leads the way coming into round number three, the final dive. Now the judges today, Hanging out on the boat, led by Antonio Martinez of Mexico. That's a fine group right there. Andre Ignatenko of Ukraine, winner of the first ever World Series in 2009. Marianne Reif of Austria, she's a two-time Olympian. Australian Jeff Arbin, the 1988 Olympian, is also here. And then as well as Olivier Morneau Ricard, he tops the five-judge panel. It's his first season as a judge, and he resides in Canada. Beautiful conditions outside. You see the pigeon rocks just off the coastline of the beautiful neighborhood of Rauche here in Beirut, Lebanon. And again, this is stop number five of seven of this 2019 World Series. Valuable points on the line and the conditions, as I mentioned, absolutely spectacular. Hot outside, 28 degrees Celsius, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Very similar, in fact, equal for the water temperature. The wind kind of up and down, Joey, but right now, late in the day here in Beirut, it has calmed down, which is very good news for the divers. Still All right, first to go here in the third and final round, Celia Fernandez, the 30-year-old from Spain, and she works as an engineer in Barcelona, wildcard diver. See if she can get it done here and set the tone for the women's third round. Now, this is the way to impress the crowds out here in Beirut. A backward arm stand, two and a half somersaults with one twist. Very difficult in the high winds. Big waves here today. The wind has settled down, fortunately. Pressing into position now. It's so impressive. Platform high off the water. Celia Fernandez delivers a very difficult dive, as you mentioned, Joey. Just the handstand alone, regardless of the little bit of a splash, very impressive. We'll see what the judges think of that. And this is also a brand new dive for Celia. Look at the reaction as she gets out of the water. There's so much pressure and tension before the dive. It's such a relief to land the dive safely. It looks like she's done a pretty good job. Look how strong she is pushing off the platform. There's the half twist. 
and that is called a Barani, which is a maneuver taken from trampolining. They're traveling at speeds up to 71 kilometers per hour, so she needs to see the water right here for as long as possible. She needs to make all those micro adjustments, little bend at the waist there, small splash, but commendable and very brave with that handstand. It's coming from that gymnastic background, so that helps her with those handstand dives. Okay, so a lot of physical strength in the shoulders and the abdominal muscles as well. High five to the safety divers below. Job well done. Three rounds completed for Celia Fernandez. All right, so her score is coming in from the five judges. The high and the lower tossed out, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. So she'll keep sevens across the board for her three scores. So a grand total after three rounds of diving, 180.55 for the wildcard diver, Fernandez of Spain. So that will set the tone here in Rauche and the Pigeon Rocks. And we look at our next competitor. There will be 10 women in this final round. Genevieve Bradley, wildcard diver. First ever appearance on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. We're up in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Not quite the diving mecca, Joey, but got into gymnastics, got in a little diving when she moved away from there. And now she's here in Beirut launching very high out of the sky. In fact, the women's platform, 21 meters, 70 feet off the Mediterranean Sea. Bam, not bad for a rookie on the series, Joey. She's done a fine job with that dive and she knows that sometimes you can feel it when you hit the water. She's playing it relatively safely in terms of the degree of difficulty. She's going for maximum execution there. So she looks like she sneaked through the water pretty cleanly. The judge is there. You can see three sevens, two six and a halves. We'll look at the replay shortly. So rotating forwards, there's the one twist. Arms will come out wide to stop that twist. It looks like she's done a good job adjusting the dive at the end. She lives in Hawaii right now, so she tends to play off the cliffs. Also here, Trace, you have to catch the timing of the waves, so you need to make sure you're not diving when a big set of <laughs> waves comes that in. That can't be easy. <laughs> we've seen some big white water through here, so you really have to stay on the platform, look to the right, pay attention. But right now, how do the judges see the dive from Genevieve Bradley. Three rounds of diving. All three scores are added together for the grand total. So this last and final round for Bradley, 63.55. You add that together with the first two rounds and she comes in with the score of 174.35 in third place. Rhianna Ifland still on top of the leaderboard with that 194 just because she is so strong and had high points early on. Greg Luganis to the left-hand side right there. Total legend two-time Olympian and our Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series Sports Director making sure everything is cool on the platform for the divers. Here is Maria Paula Quintero, the wildcard diver. Now you can see Maria with a very difficult dive. She's marking out her running takeoff. So she's gonna start there and she'll run towards the end of the platform, throw forwards with a front four somersaults in the tuck position, very high degree of difficulty. You can see in the top left-hand side of the screen, 4.1 is the tariff. 19 years old, the youngest athlete competing male or female. Boom, a little bit by, but impressive. The second highest degree of difficulty for a female in this round. What do you think of that, Joey? The timing of these dives is so hard because you're rotating so quickly. You've got to come out of the dive right at the correct moment. So orientation, aerial awareness in this sport is key, but Maria is handling herself so well. As you said, just 19 years of age, arms will throw forward to generate the rotation. Three and a half right there, completing four somersaults at the end. So a little bent over on the entry. The judges are looking for that vertical line through the water. Also the takeoff, pretty good takeoff. Toes nice and pointed. And you can just see a slight miscalculation with the body slightly bent. So anything off the angle of vertical will kick up some splash, but this is a sport only for the brave. Just standing on that platform trace when you're looking down, it's almost like the equivalent of a fifth or sixth story. Right. This is scary stuff. Speaking of standing on something, she stood on the podium in Italy, and it was the youngest ever female diver to accomplish that. So here, the young Quintero, 79.95 in this third round dive. You add it up together with the first two, 194 
5.15. So the she pulls into the number one position with that score. Impressive. And you see our next competitor is Antonia Panisi, another youngster, 20 years old of Australia, wild card diver in her fifth career World Series appearance. And Joey, he, she's done uh, quite well, a pair of top 10 finishes this season. She has. She learned two new dives this year. We had a training camp in Zhaoqing, China. She learned an inward triple in the pike position. And also this dive, back double somersault with three twists. Requires a lot of control and finesse. Okay symbol to the safety divers below. Spectators thoroughly enjoying this mm -hmm. incredible spectacle. That's the first time in Beirut, so big treat for the tourists and locals. Australian Panisi with a good dive in the third round. Difficult, Joey, but again, it looks like those waves and those swells impacting the entry. It could have. So sometimes when the swells come in, for example, you might catch the top of the wave, and of course you've got less room to finish the dive. So sometimes you need a little luck your way, and sometimes it doesn't go your way. She's looking at the judges to see what the scores are. Reaching up, there's the two and a half twist mark, the arms coming out wide, but you can see in the air her legs were splitting apart a little, so the form is very important for the judges. The legs must be together, the toes pointed. They also judge the takeoff, jumping up, pretty good jump. Right there, you can just see the legs pulling apart. A little over twist on the entry, but very commendable performance. And it makes you so nervous when you're trying these new dives out. She only began two years ago with Rhiannon Nifland diving in France with her and Rihanna Niflin and Todor Spazov, you know, help her out a lot. She goes to places to train with them. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and check it all out. Use hashtag Red Bull Cliff Diving and check out the amazing photos from all the rounds over the past couple of days. And this being a new location, there are some, some spectacular photos by our team and video. Jessica McCauley, now the British diver, 26 years old, currently third overall in the series points. And that was Joey based on her second place finish in Portugal at the last stop. That really propelled her into the top three. So looking at points, even though Brianna Nifflin's dominating, she still has a shot with 600 points on the table before now in the end of the season. That she does. Yeah. And also she's trying to play the game of consistency. Normally she would be doing a front four somersault. So She's going back to one of her favorite dives, back three somersaults in the pike position. A high scoring dive for her in the past. McCauley, not bad, Joey. Handling the swells in the waves, torpedo-like, brilliant dive. Wow, looks like she's a little bit hurt, but I mean, yeah. the dive was absolutely amazing. Okay, she's just maybe taking a moment to get her breath back. I think she really got caught with a wave. The dive is great, but you could see that swell lapping mm. against the cliff face and then coming in towards her. Actually, I thought the dive was was pretty good. Yeah, just got unlucky with the wave. Look at the replay, and you can see what the wave is doing, and I think it knocked the wind out of her, so... Something we didn't see there. Yeah, so the wave can really hit you in the chest hard, knock the wind out of you. Here's the back triple, coming out right, lining up for the entry. You can see those yeah. waves, it's so rough out there. She's got beautiful form, beautiful ele elevation. Look at that perfect pie position, looking at the water. That's the hard part. Comes up, yeah, look at that swell just coming in and sweeping her from the side. So I think she got unlucky with that one. So this is the nature of the beast in the sport of cliff diving. It's rough and it's wild in the exposed oceans here in Lebanon, Beirut. I think she did a fine job, just got unlucky. Well, she seems all right, smile on her face. Jessica McCauley, 68 points on that. Just a quick note, how about her highlining? You know, basically slacklining <laughs> from pigeon rock to pigeon rock. 40 meters in the air. Two days ago, it was unbelievable. And uh, there's some amazing photos on uh, Instagram. And go to her Instagram page and check it out on Rebel Cliff Diving as well. And, the men coming up and Andy Jones of the United States warming things up. 14 men, actually 13 with one out and Miguel Garcia got injured, but uh, the men coming up for their final round shortly as we are through the midway point of the women. Five down and five to go.
Iris Smidbawa is our next competitor. Apparently the highest degree of difficulty we're gonna see out of her. So again, you mentioned the camaraderie right there and Iris Smidbauer. Break down the highest DD and what that means in this competition, Joey. Well, if it goes her way and she gets good execution, this will really help her. She only learned this dive just yesterday. She was so excited to do it. She was walking around showing everybody the video mm. of the dive. So now it's time to put it into practice in the competition. She's one of these athletes who's been working very hard, steadily improving. You've got to work on the execution. And now she's stepping it up with degree of difficulty with the world best. She doesn't actually come from a professional diving background. I think that's what fascinates me, Joey. So Schmid Bauer of Germany, ready for her last and final dive. All three scores added together for the total. She can take the lead with this dive, just needs to score more than fives from the judges. Schmid Bauer. Schmid Bauer, wow. wow, you can see the other girls celebrating for her. Great camaraderie. I think she's done a wonderful and a remarkable job with this particular dive. Well done, Ida schmidt -Bauer. It's been a long time coming. I need to look at the results of the judges, but I do believe she should sc score fairly well. A little bit short of vertical, but that's been mm. really picky. When it's you standing on the platform, you have to be so brave. Jumping up, reaching up here. There's the one and a half twist, adding the extra degree of difficulty. There's the brownie. Let's look at the line just slightly off the vertical line, but only by a smidge. Look at it from the side angle here. Could be a little strong on takeoff. Being picky though, there's when you need to use those abdominal muscles and you're moving so quickly at that point. Very difficult to make those split second judgments, like I said earlier in the show. Wow, this has been incredible. A wild competition, records broken, new dives performed. And, and she really made an impact and sent a message to the rest of the field. Some eights and sevens and three eights, actually. Seven and a half. Remember, the high and the lower tossed out the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. That first round action that she had yesterday, Joey, really kind of set a message that she's the real deal in only her seventh career appearance on this series. 101, that is a large score. 242.15 is the grand total after three rounds. So Schmidbauer of Germany launches into the lead here in Beirut, Lebanon, off the Pigeon Rocks. And here is Ellie Smart. The youngest of the permanent divers in 2019, only at 23 years old. And I'll tell you about more than 50 people, including athletes and locals and tourists, uh, followed the call for beach cleanup uh, last Thursday morning. Joey at the Rocher the Shore the together the with time. Live Love Beirut and volunteers and founders uh, of the Clean Cliff Project. Uh, Ellie Smart, who is the founder, along with Owen Weymouth, her boyfriend, in an attempt to give back and raise awareness for everyone's responsibility for the earth. So good on you all, you guys. Uh, Maria Quintero, Garcia, Colturi, and Brigorov. Orlando Duque was there helping out. And of course, Jackson Groves, the photographer and environmentalist was in the house helping out as well. So check out the Clean Cliffs Project. It's a very important cause. Ellie Smart, what she have going on, Joey? Okay, back to somersaults with three twist. And Iris Schmidbauer is leading the way and putting the pressure on the divers to come. So right now, if Eleanor was to move into first position, she would need nines from the judges. So Iris Schmidbauer doing a great job turning the heat up in this competition in Beirut. Only four women left in this final round. Ellie Smart is the first of those four. She goes, looks like a decent entry for Ellie Smart, piercing through the water, making it look easy. The other competitors like it. Will the judges? Ellie Smart looking relieved. And as you said, doing a fine job with the Clean Cliffs Project, the founder of it, as a matter of fact. But now it's all about the cliff diving. I'd just be relieved getting across on that zip line. Exactly. <laughs> Hairy moments. <laughs> Let's look at how she's lined up to the water, slightly off axis, but it's very difficult to control the twisting dive. Reaching up, the arms will set across the chest. Once again, the arms have to come out wide. Looks like she could leave her arms out wider for longer. Just unfortunately, you can see a bit of a twist on the bottom of the dive. So the judges mm -hmm. need to see the dive absolutely side on. Should be no twist at the end. Okay, aerial awareness is key in this sport. You can spend a lot of time working on counting somersaults and feeling those twists in the air. 
She's still waiting her, for her first career podium on this World Series. She'll keep a pair of six and a half and a six. So a grand total of 214.25. That puts her into second place behind Iris Schmidbauer of Germany. So a great battle going on for the women with Schmidbauer. It's 242.15 leads the charge on the podium for the moment, along with Smart. Macaulay sits in third right now. Three athletes yet to draw. Nestarava of Belarus, Adi Jimenez of Mexico, who set a new record in the first round. Required dive, Rihanna Niflent. Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, multi-time world champion in the series. All right, here we go with Yana Netsiarava, 27-year-old of Belarus, currently fourth in the overall points. Last stop in Portugal, had a dismal ninth that pushed her out of the top three and allowed Jessica McCauley to enter that arena. Had a great start to the season though, as you're saying, so she's had some podiums this year, but she's diving cold in this competition. And by that I mean she's got a back injury right now, so she chose not to do any practice dives whatsoever to conserve her back injury. You can see the tape on her back. So she's got to stay focused right near on the platform and she would need oof, more than eight and a half to move into the lead. We've got a real challenge on her hand right now for Jana Nestriava, looking at the waves right now to see if she can find a calm moment to dive. And I can't imagine a back injury dropping 21 meters, 70 feet into the Mediterranean Sea here in Beirut, Lebanon. And not calm waters either, as we saw. Forward three somersaults, one and a half twist for Yana Nestriava. Boom! Wow! Brilliant dive. Cliff diving at its best right there, Joey Zuber. And as I said, without any training whatsoever, how good was that dive? And probably I mean, easier had on her the, back. Exactly, <laughs> she had it dialed in, and that was probably the right strategy. It pulled off and it worked with that particular entry. Okay, let's look at the takeoff, throwing nice and hard. There's the twist at the beginning, digging deep into the middle of the dive. And Yana, when she's on fire, she knows how to get through the water. There's the disappearing act. Not an easy task with the rough seas here in Beirut today. I'd like to see her a little deeper into the pike, though. So it's very important when you're in the pike position, you stay with the legs closer to the chest. So you can see here, here's the twist. And then the pike's a little bit too open. So a few deductions from the judges. But uh, commendable performance for Yana Nestriava. Yeah, I'm putting some pressure on the next two divers which would be Adi Jimenez of Mexico, Rhiannon Iflan. Look at that, a bunch of eights up there, a few eight and a halfs. And again, the high and the low tossed out, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. She'll keep eight and a half, eight and a half, excuse me, across the board, 99.45, 242. So that puts her into the lead over Simid Bauer by only just a small margin, 242.25. Rihanna Niflan warming up there, getting set for her dive. Got two more divers to come, Adriana Jimenez, Rihanna Niflan, the last one to dive in the platform, going in reverse order, as you mentioned earlier. Okay, Adriana Jimenez with a reverse triple somersault in the tuck position. Earning that confidence. She took Italy off because of an injury. Then she comes here and actually nails a record dive with a 74.10 in the required dive, topping Rihanna Niflin 71.50 from Portugal. And there's Rihanna Niflin warming up on the men's platform. Up top, she'll keep a close eye on Adi Jimenez to see what she needs to do score-wise. And that is the bell signifying that Adi Jimenez is ready. What does she need from the judges? Okay, Charlie? she's got to score sevens from the judges here with the reverse triple somersault in the tuck position. High DD, 3.9. Telling the safety divers to move a little bit over. Entering the Mediterranean, Adi Jimenez, not as good as her first round dive when it comes to entry, Joey. Your thoughts on this as she carves through the H2O? Well, we can see in more detail shortly. She looks happy with the dive, yeah, though. Sure. <laughs> looks relieved after that, so, so nerve-wracking. Taking that plunge so hard. 
think she's got in her favor is her takeoff and her form in the air. Watch this, she's the reverse takeoff, leaping up, great elevation for the platform, beautiful tuck position, everything in line. You can just see here, just staying slightly hunched on entry. So just rolling through, a little unfortunate because the takeoff and the form in the air was exquisite. Look at that, toes absolutely pointed. That's a classic Mexican technique to have the tuck position like that. But she should fare pretty well from the judges with the dive. Once again, having to judge all parts fairly and equally, the takeoff, the flight and the entry. So just awaiting the scores, and I'm sure she's pretty nervous to see what they're going to give her right now. So the competition is really starting to ramp up. Just one more diver to come, but what are the scores going to be for Adriana Jimenez? 87.75 on that final dive right there. So you roll that up, add the first two rounds, 251.85. So Adriana Jimenez of Mexico moves into the lead, guaranteed a podium position, along with Netirava of Belarus with one competitor remaining and that is Rhiannon Ifland so great women's competition boiling down to the end and look at that a beautiful shot of the city of Beirut Lebanon and the neighborhood of Rauche the Pigeon Rocks as Jimenez hopes to hold on to that number one spot I'd like to be in that little paraglider right now yeah, that'd, be, yeah, a, that'd a, be fun pretty good view that's a really Should good rent view. To that spot <laughs> but let's talk about yeah. an athlete that knows how to handle pressure the last diver on the platform Rhiannon Ifland I mean three-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion we talked about the stats earlier Joey I mean just remarkable and the last dive Todor Spazov coach and uh, boyfriend right there waving the flag and she had that record dive earlier in second round of 122.55 a new record for the optional dives this is her favorite dive she likes to leave this to last watch her looking at the ocean she's a keen surfer she knows how to read the swell very clever in these kind of situations Here we go. Final diver for the women, Rihanna Nifflin. And that just happened again. Rihanna Nifflin, unstoppable, unmatchable. Time and time again, it's almost like the seas part for her. She slices her way through the water for one of those signature rip entries. Rihanna Nifflin on fire this season. Her stats are just insane right now. And, you, you know, we talked earlier, Joey, about the dives. You, similar degree of difficulty. The women have similar strengths, but where she differs is right here up in the head. I think she just manages to block everything out. She just thinks to herself, it doesn't matter. I need to be in the moment. Does not matter what anyone else does. I can't control what they do. I can't control what the judges do. I can control my own mind. I am the master of my own destiny, she says to herself. And this dive has just been impeccable for her i mean i've rarely ever seen her miss this particular dive wow what an athlete an outstanding performance by rihanna niflan sure to receive fantastic scores from the judges the inward triple somersault the tuck position there's that barani the last part of the dive the somersault with the half twist so she's done that thousands and thousands of times on the trampoline and the judges Marks up. Oh, wow. Two tens, a pair of not three tens right there, and a pair of nine and a halves. Unbelievable dive by Rhiannon Iflin, impressing the judging judges panel and winning another Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. 112.10 on that particular dive, Joey, and a grand total of 30615. The fifth series win in a row this season sixth when you include the finals last year that's amazing and i do believe there's another record right now that's the most amount of tens any woman has received in a dive i need to have someone else double check the stats but i'm pretty sure that is another record a competition here in beirut it's just been exquisite despite the rough seas despite the high winds despite all the challenges every single one of these athletes are absolutely incredible Iflin is the champion once again here in Rauche, Beirut, Lebanon, with that 306 just towering over the rest of the field. Impressive result by Adi Jimenez back on her game after sitting out in Italy with an injury. Yana Netziarava once again on the podium, but the young Gira Smidbauer, great result fourth place. Fantastic stuff, it really was. Another interesting point about Rhiannon, she just broke 
300 with just three dives as well. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, most divers struggle to make 300 with four dives. But credit to Ira Schmidt-Bauer as well. Credit to Adriana Jimenez for her second place finish. Great stuff. Wonderful diving for all of the ladies on the podium. So Rhiannon Ifland with the overall points. She has 800 of them. That's the Grava in 462nd. McCauley drops to third. So Netsia Rava getting back into the top three. But wow, it is going to be an interesting competition in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And our World Series champion, Rihanna Difflin, could wrap it up and possibly win another Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series title. Great women's competition here in Beirut. So Rhiannon Iflin, the champion once again, five in a row this season, setting records all over the place. And Joey, today marks the 77th start of Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series since it began in 2009. And this is the third time in history the World Series has been held in the Middle East. And Joey, you've actually experienced all three of them. Tell us about it. That I have. Now, it's been a fascinating history, to be honest, with the cliff diving in the Middle East. And in 2012, we had a competition in Oman. And it was in a place called the Wadi Shab, which is a kind of an oasis, basically in the middle of the desert. For me, it was almost like a scene out of a movie, spectacular scenery. Also, it was the finale of the season. I remember it coming right down to the wire with a battle between Orlando Duque and Gary Hunt, who just barely defeated Orlando Duque for the World Series trophy, the King Kai Kelly trophy by just a mere 1.85 points on the very last dive. Talk about a thrilling competition. And then from day to night in 2016, Dubai was the first ever night event held in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Once again, it was the finale of the series. And uh, we also saw event. the uh, rookie, Rhiannon Ifland, at the time taking her win, standing there tall with the King Kai Kili Trophy. It was the first season for her as a, as a wild card diver, exactly. much less. First and ever then also, long. first uh, win for Andy Jones at the night event. So pretty scary diving at night. But what a spectacular setting it was for the athletes. And now, of course, we're here in Beirut. So this is the third time a we've been in the location. Middle East. And it's treated us very, very well. We've yeah, seen a lot well. of records today, of course. Yeah. The local team has done a fantastic job. But uh, let's check out the World Series points right now. The World Rankings for the men as we literally... Uh, look to their fourth or third and final round excuse me there's three rounds at this competition Gary Hunt now with 600 points after winning the last stop the third total win this season Jonathan Paredes and Andy Jones are tied with 350 points each with a large gap of 250 points behind Gary Gary Hunt but remember still 600 points on the table uh, between now and the end of the season so things can rapidly change on the men's side Joey Let's check out, uh, you know, like the women, the men set their pace after two rounds of diving here in Beirut. So setting up the third and final round, Joey, bring us up to speed from what happened earlier on. Bit of a shot of the monolithic cliff face there. This is Steve Labou diving directly from the rock face round one. And he was in second position after that first round. Gary Hunt taking the joyride across to the monolith. And what a fine dive. Also scoring tens from the judges on that particular dive. And he was in the lead after round one. And currently he's still in the lead in the competition right now. He's still the man to chase. This is Miguel Garcia warming up in practice. And watch this, a very hard hit on ah. the bottom. And so he had to withdraw from the competition. Unfortunately, came out early in the dive, so he slowed the dive down too early, and mm. you can see a very, very tough impact, but he looks okay there. So he just took a, a strong shot in the chest, took all the wind out of his chest, and this was a real highlight moment for me. Catalan Preda, beautiful back arm stand, one of the few people in the world doing this dive. Look, the one half twist, three and a half somersault, pow! And that put him into second place after that second round dive. Catalan Preda, the wild card. What a fine performance. 
great technician. He's got beautiful form, fantastic technical background. We've got to keep an eye out for yeah, Catalan Predator in the future. Yeah, I was just going to say that, yeah, because <laughs> he keeps delivering some unbelievable dives, and he hasn't been in that many competitions. But uh, I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful afternoon here in Beirut off the coastline of the neighborhood of Rauche. Mikhail Garcia with that dive you saw earlier. I mean, people ask all the time, Joey, you know, does it hurt when you land? Well, you've just witnessed some of the things that can happen upon impact. Even when you land well, sometimes it can hurt. Yeah. So there's a start list. Long Cole will kick things off. It is the lowest score after two rounds that will run first. And David Colturi of the United States will run number nine. You see the top competitors right here. And Navratil Paredes, Steve Lobu doing a fine job today so far. Catalin Freda, who we just saw. Look out for him. But Gary Hunt, once again, absolutely on fire. The seven-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion coming off of three different wins this season so far out of four competitions. Now the men's platform, you see it right there above the women's, 27 meters, 90 feet off the sea. Alon Cole of Luxembourg, the 36-year-old diver, will kick things off. Not bad for Alon Cole, for a guy who we haven't seen much, and it is his first appearance this 2019 season. Although running first means he came into this final round with low points, Joey, but that is a way to finish things off. He's one of the veterans in the sport. He has made the podium in the past in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, so showing some experience. We did speak to him earlier this morning. He was saying, man, I really need to do some lead ups, which means do some dives off those lower platforms to feel confident. He said, it's pretty wild out here. And it looks like those lead-ups that he did paid dividends. So he's landing up and down, vertical with the dive, front triple somersault with two and a half twists. Watch how he does it. So he throws the arms forward, generates rotation, pike there. There's the two twists, arms wide, stops, and there's the third stage of the dive. So you can break mm. dives down into different sections. So he'll do a particular section of the dive at the beginning, maybe the twist in the middle, and some divers will reverse that. So each diver will choose a particular style of dive that suits them. If you just joined us, getting us, getting you up to speed, we are in Beirut, Lebanon, live for the fifth stop at the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Alon Cole is the first of 13 men to go. We made some adjustments, usually four rounds of diving, but here, because of the waves, the conditions, and the swells have been challenging for everybody. So now it is pared down to only three dives, but all three count in this competition. And we are looking at Net Nate Jimerson of the United States. And Good guy from Minnesota, he and his wife, Brittany. Brittany's here, actually. They have two children, a three-year-old girl and a boy who soon turns five. They live in Japan, and he performs in the House of Dancing Water, a unique and theatrical show incorporating diving elements. There's Brittany right there. Nate Jimison did a pretty impressive dive in the second round. He did a running takeoff front quad somersault, two and a half twist. So he's very light, he's very agile, so he's got the capacity to compete with the best, big DD mm. in the second round, 5.4. So now he'll show off. Check this out. Back arm stand, two and a half somersaults with three twists. One of his favorite dives. Like a long call. This is the first event for him this season, right? Mm -hmm. So he, you know, I mean, it's just like your first golf tournament being Pebble Beach. <laughs> you know, it's like, step it up, boys. Here you go. Here's the tough okay, course. Let's throw you in the deep end, literally. <laughs> Okay, watch this. He's gonna start off backwards, puts his hands in position. He's gonna use a lot of strength and prowess. Nerves of steel. Oh, he's gonna pike up into it. Seas are building up. Jimerson, 136 pounds, light guy. Great degree of difficulty and drills at the entry. His wife, Brittany, likes it. Will the judges? A steady handstand and steady diving by Nate Jimerson. And he could feel that dive. He must have felt like, yes, I've snuck through the water, the nice clean entry. And his wife, Brittany, I'm sure is very, very proud yeah. right now. That's the last round for him. So relieving to finish that. Look at that broad smile across his face. You have to face your mental demons in this sport. Mm. You know, you have this little devil on your shoulder saying, OK, don't do it, don't do it. You have to push through that and visualize the dive perfectly. Looks like his body language is good. Well, he is in the show. The he's, a, he's a showman. He is. <laughs> Forms in the House of Dancing Water in Macau. So show much like Cirque du Soleil.
and uh, he's had uh, a lot of experience diving from around 25 meters using the Russian swing as well very strong athlete and uh, Nate Jimison the wild card we salute you job well done today remember all three rounds added together so the fact that he was running number two means he had low scores after the first and second round even though high scores on this particular dive I mean that is big right there 112.80 So a great dive. He's got to be psyched. Nate Jimerson. Remember, these guys are also trying to get permanent diver positions for next year, trying to kind of earn that respect mm -hmm. for the judges and everybody else to get that permanent position for the 2020 season as he gets a lift back to the shore off the Pigeon Rocks. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Red Bull Cliff Diving's Facebook page, and photos, videos, cool stories, and much more especially related to this particular event in the beautiful neighborhood of Rauche and the Pigeon Rocks in Beirut, Lebanon, stop number five. You can also check out some of the older events that we've already done this season and check out our footage. There is Greg Luganis, the famous one, two-time Olympic medalist on the left-hand side right there. He is the sport director. I always say this. I loved him in the movie Entourage. Hate to say <laughs> he did a great performance playing he himself. Great. He was, he was hey. great, great. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's such a good guy. Greg Luganis is always great to have the most famous guy in diving here. And here is Chris Kalanis next to go. Now, Chris Kalanis is playing it safe in this competition, opting to lower his degree of difficulty. In with three somersaults in the pike position with a half twist, but we still commend him to be valiant with this challenge from 27 meters, 85 kilometers per hour when you hit the water. Chris Kalanis, the experienced one. That was absolutely cutting right there into the water. Spinning Great his way. Third round dive. Spinning his way in towards the platform. The thing about Chris Kalanis, he's got great form. Actually a diver who always really starts well in the first few rounds. Sometimes falters slightly yeah. on the last dive, but he did not falter with this particular dive, I have to say. You know, we look at the overall points, and just don't rule this guy out with 600 Never. points left on the table Never. the rest of this season. I mean, he may decide to come back with his high degree of difficulty dives later in the season. Watch this, standing backwards, but throwing in towards the platform. Very hard to get the rotation moving with the inward takeoff. Much harder than a front rotating dive. You need the arms above the head in order to throw. It's almost like you're throwing a soccer ball, and that throwing action helps you pick up that rotational velocity with the dive. They can see making a pretty good adjustment at the end of the dive. Just a bit of a low splash. But he's got, look at that mm, flexibility. Look how the legs are completely folded against the body, just like a pocket knife. That is full marks from the judges. So the judges will be judging the execution of the dive, not the degree of difficulty. Remember that. Okay. 40th career start today for the artistic one runs a company called mad hoppers clothing event promotions all kinds of cool stuff a bunch of seven and a half that's what'll keep behind the lower tossed out by the way with the five judges the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty all three rounds added together so Kalanis with 221.60 not enough to overtake nate jimerson of the united states who is in the lead with 242 excuse me 234 Point seven zero. Alexei Prigorov of Ukraine, 32 years old, the Olympic bronze medalist from Beijing 2018. He earned that in the three meter springboard synchro competition. The only Olympic medalist to compete here on this Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Also placed third at the FINA High Diving World Cup in Dubai. Has incredible acrobatic ability. Very tall, but very, very fast. Big DD, 5.1. Another guy to watch out for in the overall series points and in the future. Here we go. Jock delivers a nice dive under pressure. The ladies who are finished with their competition, they love it. Will the judges, Joey? How about that? By wow. Prigorov. Wow, what a superb dive by Alexei Prigorov. <laughs> the second round dive. Our favorite name to say. Yeah, he faltered slightly, but he has come up trumps with this particular dive watch how powerful he is jumping as hard as he can trying to get that rotational velocity moving holding on right here that is four somersaults so in total four somersaults with two twists and so years and years of three meter springboard diving 
It's incredible, like I said before, that he can rotate so fast being so tall as well. And that shows you how strong he is right. physically. And for those new to cliff diving, Joey, why feet first and why aren't they diving head first? Okay, so it's 85 kilometers per hour. It's almost three times the height of the Olympic high board. You just cannot withstand the impact going head first. So you need to use those big muscle groups. Great scores for Alexei Prigorov with high DD. Excellent scores. The lowest of the five and eight. The rest eight and a half. And look at that, Alexei Prigorov of Ukraine pulls into the lead, 268.65. He is stoked. Prigorov, number four to go of 14. A lot of top divers yet to drop into the Mediterranean Sea off the Pigeon Rocks here in Beirut, Lebanon. A new location. All the divers, this is fresh territory as Matthias Appenzeller of Switzerland. He electrified the crowd in Switzerland last year, just a little less than a year ago when we were in Sissicon. It was awesome to watch. I mean, they, I couldn't believe how fanatical like the Swiss fans were. Yeah. I mean, normally in Latin America, you kind of expect that, but in Switzerland, that was by far one of the most amazing receptions we've ever seen for an athlete. And he, he's a law, he doesn't look like the typical law student, but he is a law student from the University of Zurich. And uh, I was speaking with him yesterday. He said, I'm moving to Japan to go to law school over there. Well, I think he should yeah. audition for the part of Thor in the I Avengers. Think he should. I mean, he's, he's there. Look I at him. I think he should. He's like a <laughs> CrossFit model. <laughs> Popular with the ladies. Here we go. The wild card diver. Matthias Oppenzeller. Inward four somersaults in the pike position with a half twist. A bit like Chris Kalanis, but he's adding an extra somersault. So with this particular skill, he's going to have to use absolute maximum power on takeoff. He's going to really psych himself up for this dive. So he's got to score more than, he's got to score eight and a half to take the lead. The youngest athlete on the men's side in today's competition at 25 years old. Oppenzeller, oh, yeah. oh. look at that, disappearing. There's the fan base <laughs> cheering <laughs> Matthias Appenzell. It looks like we've imported the Swiss yep. here to come and cheer his, for Matthias. His, his wow. Girl, his girlfriend is here cheering him on. What a great guy, too. And yeah. just nailing that third and final dive. He's had a little bit of trouble with this dive, actually, in, uh, I think it was in China, but he did hit his feet on the platform at one point, so he has to be very careful. Like, when you're doing those pike dives, spinning in towards the platform, your feet will come really close to the platform. So it's not uncommon to tip your toes at right. the end. So maybe from the side angle, I can explain that to you a little bit better, but he's uh, performed very well with this particular dive. Throwing for watch how close the feet are. Look at that. Well, actually, maybe he even tipped the platform. I'm not sure. That was extremely close, but he did not lose his nerves no. and held on for the dive. Joey, here's a guy who got a start when he attended a workshop in 2009, so 10 years ago. Orlando Duque was a mentor and coach teaching the clinic. And just to show you the influence that the legend Orlando Duque makes within this sport, these youngsters now competing on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and getting big scores. And planting the seed for the future. Imagine that, doing yeah. a workshop with Orlando Duque. I'm going to be a cliff diving one day. <laughs> and he realized oh, and I'm going to grow out my hair like Orlando, exactly. too. I'm going to yeah. grow, grow, grow the locks out. <laughs> 263.30 for Oppenzeller. Not bad. So the Swiss diver with 260, that 263 puts him into second. Alexei Prigorov, still the leader with 268. Oppenzeller will still get into the top 10 with that dive, which will be a career best for the youngster. Actually, 10th is his best finish, so he will tie that. Mm -hmm. But maybe he will beat it today, depending on the rest of the divers. Great crowd on hand here in Beirut, Lebanon. The first time that these folks have witnessed a Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Joey, you and I were speaking earlier about it. Great job to the local team. Fantastic event so far. Later in the day, which is not normal for these competitions, we had the nighttime event in Dubai, but this is definitely late in the day so it's a long wait actually there's yeah. andy jones with his winning dive in dubai the night event he's such an adaptable diver so he spent a lot of time working in cirque du soleil in las vegas actually diving yeah. under similar conditions in the theater so he's used to diving under lights and performing in the shows and performer he did there with that particular dive so a lot of the athletes were pretty scared mm. of the night diving andy jones not look at those scores oh, I'm amazing I, i'm hope 
I, I think he I think he's wishing that the sun does go down quickly because <laughs> it is his first and only win on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Put his night goggles on. Hey, watch this, people. <laughs> he needs to do something. Beautiful city of Beirut in the background. The Pigeon Rocks, the men's platform once again, standing 27 meters, 90 feet off the water. And here is Mr. Jones in his 47th career start on the World Series. He's been on the podium the past two stops, second in Italy and third in Portugal. He's on a roll. Consistent performer. Perhaps the most important thing, he told me that his baby girl Kayla is approaching nine months and she's about to walk. She's cruising around a little bit. Yep. Little acrobat yeah. on the way. Yeah. Andy Jones, here we go. A big splash on that uncharacteristic of Andy Jones right there a guy who usually delivers under pressure in the third or fourth and final round depending on the competition a little unfortunate so he does look disappointed with the end of the dive but uh, sometimes you can be unfortunate in terms of the weather and the conditions but it did look like he overcooked the dive so when I say overcooked he's over rotated it's difficult to tell where that comes from so have a look at the dive here here's the two and a half twist at the beginning wraps like a gymnast with the arms across the chest in the pike position there there's the brownie what happened right here yeah, he just put his feet in front so sometimes if you change your angle just at the last moment put your feet in front it's uh, obviously can disrupt the end of the dive so two and a half twists once again, I just want to look at this carefully mm -hmm. from side on so I can explain what happened. Yeah, look, he just was over-rotating a bit, and if he really tried to stretch the dive out, keep the feet behind him, maybe he could have got the dive down. But obviously, he was feeling a little bit fast there on that particular dive. It's a long wait here in Beirut. Obviously, the competition's starting late, so long day, nervous energy building up. The score's for Andy Jones. Get a few sevens in there. I'll keep a pair of them and a six and a half. Multiply that by the degree of difficulty, 94. Add it together with the first two rounds. Jones of the United States, 247, 05. Puts it into third behind Prigorov in number one. Appenzella of Switzerland, number two. And look at the, look at the trek down. Blake Aldridge getting set to die. But I mean, look at that. Just, you know, scaling the walls <laughs> of the Pigeon Rocks after after the zip line. Actually, we went on the platform and I remember you holding on for dear life. Oh, I, was, your I, 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 I was freaking out. I think low center of gravity, keeping it close towards the I, ladder there. I was freaking out. Coming from an aerial skiing background where I went 55 feet in the air, I was freaking out. But I am down here safe and I'm in a broadcast booth with you, Joey. Blake Aldrich, the very experienced 36-year-old diver, currently 10th overall. Look at this. Wasting no time. As per usual, Blake, here we go. Blake Aldridge, not a bad entry by the Brits. Nice diving, putting his Olympic skills into use right here. <laughs> he's absolutely ecstatic, but he's one of those divers. He can make the podium. He's very hit or miss, but this time Judges. he has hit the dive. I was asked it. last year he was hanging out with Steve Aoki, the famous DJ. I asked him yesterday, I said, where's Aoki hanging out? He goes, it's all my competitions uh, conflict. I haven't yeah, been hanging out Aoki, with Steve. Yeah, Aoki actually likes to actually jump off the cliff. Yeah. So uh, Aoki got in touch with Blake Audrey and said, hey, can you teach me how to jump off the rocks? And he said, sure, why sure. not? So they've been friends ever since. So yeah. I believe he's flown in the Aoki jet Oh, he well. has been in the Aoki jet, <laughs> yes. But uh, Blake will tell you about it. Exactly. <laughs> but I do uh, hope to see Blake actually add another twist to this dive. So in the past, he has done a back arm stand, two and a half somersaults with four twists. So this time it's with three twists, but no shame in that. The former Olympian putting his skills to work. And that Olympics that he competed in 2008, where he was eighth place, actually very impressive. Nice diving. Wow. Nice scenery. It's impressive to have this such such a raw location right in a city setting as well. I don't think we've ever yeah. seen a location like this before. It's fantastic for the spectators can line the top yeah. of the cliffs to watch the world's best cliff divers. I remember the super high temperatures here in Beirut. The limestone outcrops are what the pigeon rocks are made out of towering 40 meters above the sea. Blake Aldrich, how about this? And he is seventh to go and moves into the lead now with 271. So that will help Aldridge in the overall rankings. A guy who has had a bit of a roller coaster of a season. And here now is David Colturi, currently eighth in the overall World Series points. Today, he celebrates his 50th career start 
on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Guy's been working really hard since his injury in Sisicon, where he had that spleen injury, he got surgery, there was talk about never diving again, and now less than a year later, he's back on top of his game. Yeah, he had to almost completely rebuild himself. You can see a big scar across his chest, so obviously cutting through the abdominal muscles. So he's a very hard-working athlete, did a lot of rehab, and it's paying dividends. And now he's performing one of the world's hardest dives. Look at that DD in the top left-hand corner of the screen. 5.4, reverse two somersaults with five twists. Wow. DD, meaning degree of difficulty. He needs an 87.50 to pull into the lead. David Kulturi of the United States. He needs sixes from the judges, and he can do this. It's in his grasp. He needs a perfect takeoff for this particular dive. It's got to be just right. Kulturi, a difficult time, and throws a little awesome sauce on that one, Joey. David Kulturi with the disappearing act with one of the world's hardest dives. He badly needed that. Had a patchy season, but not a patchy dive with this one. Beautiful work. Wow. Amazing action here in Beirut. And what have we just been served, Joey? A platter, a platter of, of first-class first cliff diving. diving. And the and platter goes to David Kulturi. It's Kulturi. like a Lebanese mixed grill right here. Hey, the we've site. got everything. We've got all the ingredients. We've got the vegetables. We've got the meat. We've got the sauce. we got a fine dive for David Kulturi. The sheesh talk. A full mixed grill right here. Wow. Massive jump. Huge elevation. The never-ending twist. Four and a half twists. There's the Brani making it five twists in total. Crushing the entry. And he's here to impress the judges, and I'm sure he'll receive high scores. Beautiful line, does not let his feet come apart whatsoever. Very common to have that centrifugal force with the legs wanting to pull apart. And he used all of his strength in his legs. Centri Absolutely. Centrifugal force, the apparent force that acts outward on a body moving around the center, arising from the body's inertia. And that's from my uh, junior high education there. All right, here we go. All nines across the board. He gets a nine and a half by the five judges. The high and the low toss. Look at that. 145.80 on that third and final dive. Where does that look in points? That is massive. Almost gets the high score over his teammate, Steve Lobu, who holds a 147.90 record. But nevertheless, David Kulturi of the United States launches into the lead with 329.40. That is going to be a tough score to beat. However, there are some top divers yet to come down. Five left in this men's competition at the World Series held here in Beirut, Lebanon for the first time leading by 58 points. As the sun gets lower here in Beirut, Lebanon, off the beautiful neighborhood of Rauche. And here is a guy that's gonna pump up the crowd. Watch this, Mikhail Navratil. Having a solid season so far. Third place finish at the last stop in Italy. Or excuse me, in Italy, he had a third place. Hey, David Couturi, by the way, has just really set the tone with that really high degree of difficulty. So he's got his work cut out for him right now, Mikhail Navratil. Under pressure, Mikhail Navratil in his typical style on the third round. Nails that one. Great sound as he hits the water. That's called a rip entry. Sounds like you're tearing cloth as you rip your way through the water. That's one way to impress the judges. And he's a very experienced athlete. He's always in there. He's, you know, powerful and strong and, and, and robust. And, and he's just, he just hasn't been that guy after all of the competitions he's been in. It's his 73rd career start, but he just hasn't, he's got up on the top of the podium twice in his career. He's always right yeah. in there. He's so, so, so consistent. But the point is, in this day and age, you've got these young divers coming up and they've got massive degree of difficulty. It's a big risk, but when they hit it, they just leap above the rest. And he's a little bit realistic about his uh, chance of uh, pushing new dives. He said, it's hard for me to do an extra twist or somersault. He may think about doing it, but he's a, as a bigger guy, mm. very tall. Those taller divers, it is hard to try those highly difficult maneuvers. 
a very distinct and dynamic diver in the Mikhail Navratil. David Kulturi will still hold down the top spot after looking at those eights across the board. He'll have a couple eight and a halfs that he will keep at that 107.50. Added together with the first two rounds, gives him 291, not bad, puts him into second. But he is still, I mean, Kulturi, wow, I mean, is well over 30 points ahead, 35 points ahead of second place. Gary Hunt, seven-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion, getting ready on top of the Pigeon Rock. Just a small area for the athletes to warm up there. And has Johnny Paredes. Gets ready to dive. In Portugal, he had those tens. He set the all-time record and currently tied in points with American Andy Jones with the overall series points at 350 apiece. Can he separate himself from Jones? Today's the day to do that after you saw Jones's third round dive. Yes, we call him the style master and the rip master because consistently he absolutely nails the entry. Did have a bit of a slip up in one competition this year, sliding back into seventh position at the last competition, as you said, on fire. So now he's trying to guide the safety divers into the right position. So he's got to dive very, very well right now if he wants to make the podium. Right, and have a shot at the title for this season as he won in 2017. Johnny Paredes, here we go, third and final dive. typical for him but a little bit of a splash on that one uncharacteristic for him Joey he needs a 79.85 to pull into the lead over Coulter will this do it to me it looked absolutely smooth to be honest I mean maybe there's a little bit of splash mm. but from the angle that I saw looks like he was pretty much vertical through the water that's the most important point well not the most important point but it's up there you can see him doing his ritual before the dive all the divers will have something they do before just to get themselves settled, get into their routine, good elevation. Look at how the legs are completely together, holding the pike. He's performed in many shows over the year, years. And he, uh, yes, just a slight mistake, maybe slightly piked on entry, but that's being incredibly picky when moving at those speeds. It's such a tough, tough impact as we saw a few divers taking a hard landing, mm -hmm. even when you stand up and down is tough and massive scores for Jonathan Paredes. That's what we expect from, from him time and time again. Two nine and a half, three nines. Johnny Paredes, smooth as silk. Marion Reif gave him that nine and a half, but he will throw that one away and he'll keep three nines and multiplied by the degree of difficulty, 124, a giant score, but not enough to overtake David Colturi because Paredes with 315.45 will not top the 329 of Mr. Kulturi of the United States. Gary Hunt getting ready on top of the Pigeon Rock. I mean, look at that setting right there. It's just a small little space for these guys. The wind blowing and the sun is going down and it is affecting them probably across the way. Their vision, Joey, very challenging conditions. David Kulturi, Jonathan Paredes, Nabratil on the podium for the moment. Three to go. Steven Labou, Catalan Pereira, Pereira, and Gary Hunt. Kulturi stoked about his results so far but he's pretty eager to watch his very good friend steve labu the first person in the world to perform this dive front five somersaults what? in the pike position if you can what? try to count the somersaults you the viewer sitting at home count the somersaults five. standing backwards now watch this hop skip and a jump you That's say five you said five i said five it's going to make you dizzy there's the bell signifying the start of the dive. You need a deep breath. Has to be poised to take the lead. He's got to score nines from the judges. Tall order, but he can do it. Here we go. Needs big scores right now. Steve Labou. Labou, not the entry he was looking for on that. David Colturi, his good friend and the current leader in the, at the moment. He knows it. Is he okay? Such a shame for Steve Labou. He just threw everything on the line in terms of the degree of difficulty. You can see David Couture is actually, obviously, as I said before, a good friend, and he's disappointed for Steve Labou. But nonetheless, that's part of the game. Last year, he did great. I mean, he almost won the King Kai Achille Trophy. Yep. And Gary Hunt just beat him in the last competition. 
Here we go, four and a half, and there's the five somersaults and an over rotation there. That meaning he went past the vertical line. Just need to identify why if he came out too late. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Yeah, he came out very late in the dive. So it's important that you need to come out at the right point. If he came out a little early, he could have slowed the rotation down. Watch once again. One, two, squeezing, three, squeezing again. Yeah, look, holding on until he was upside down. And you saw the arms going above the head there, trying to put the air brakes on, but it was just too late to slow the dive down. Unfortunate. All right, Stephen Lobu with 81.6 on that. Super difficult dive, but he knows he can do better. You see just the hands go to the forehead like, ah, I blew it right there. David Colturi, one career win, Joey, and that was back in 2013, and that was in Italy. A long time for this guy to be on top of the podium after his, in, you know, being his 50th career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Will today be his day? It could be. He's had a lot of injuries in his time. Gary Hunt getting warmed up. He said to me, actually this morning, he didn't want to do his difficult dives in practice today. He doesn't like doing that. He prefers doing it the day before. So he's just going in cold with his dive. But now Catalan Preda, How the about wild card. This guy? How about this guy? Wow. Made, made his Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series debut last season in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Catalin Pereira, Pereira of Romania. B Gary Hunt will follow him. He needs a 121.40, a giant score to pull ahead of Colturi. Okay, if he scores eight and a halves, he can do this. First person in the world to do this dive. Back four somersaults, two twists. Catalin Pereira, the wild card. Catalin Pereira, oh, again, very difficult dives, Joey, but under the pressure, is that the entry that he wanted? And I keep talking about the entry and not the degree of difficulty, but like any sport, you like gymnastics, you need to back up your degree of difficulty with a very solid entry or landing. You got to hit it. I mean, the dive is so, so, so busy, so it's very easy to make a mistake at the final part of the dive, but still, He's a wild card, and with more experience, I do believe he will perform better. And we need to keep a very, very close eye on Catalan Preda. Just a slight over-rotation, so just the slightest miscalculation can lead to the splash kicking up, but still, he just looks so elegant in the air, in my opinion. So, actually, as a matter of fact, he placed third in his first competition as a wild card, so he has made the podium before. Just coming out a little bit too early, in my opinion, in the dive and just rolling through the water, but split second judgments, just a tiny miscalculation from what I can see. This is only his third career appearance on the World Series. He'll keep seven and a half, a reminder, five judges, the high and the low tossed out, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. David Golturi, Golturi is elated. He's had 13 podiums in his career, so he is guaranteed that silver medal and possibly gold, depending on the outcome of Gary Hunt. Catalin Peretta guaranteed a podium. He just pulled into second place behind Cole Turi. And we'll see if Jonathan Peretta, who is in third place with 315, can hold on to a podium, a familiar place for the Mexican diver. Great stuff by Catalin Peretta. Despite that smart mis miscalculation, he's right up there now. One final competitor remaining. He needs 115.90 to move into the lead and win for the fourth time this season. Now this is his bread and butter dive, but he cannot falter. David Kulturi has really pushed Gary Hunt in this competition. Gary must score a mix of seven halves and eights from the judges to take the lead. Anything can happen right now. It is one of his favorite dives, but we have a question mark remaining on this dive. You can see Gary Hunt definitely nervous. He is the last man on the platform. The sea's rolling in. David Couturi, Catalan Preda on the podium right now. Will Gary Hunt win victory number 38 and continue the streak, or will David Couturi win for the second time in his career and the first time since 2013. Gary Hunt, final diver here in Beirut, Lebanon. Beautiful shot. Gary Hunt in 
typical form, the Magic Man. Now you see him, now you don't. Gary Hunt is absolutely unstoppable. I do not think he is a human being. This guy is just remarkable. <laughs> Colt Alex Terry's like, David's like, and like what, what, what is, is it going, going on? to take? Really, seriously? He's got actually, in total, he's got the highest degree of difficulty out of all the divers, but time and time again, Gary Hunt's execution has been absolutely exquisite. Watch this, three and a half twists coming out into the pike position. And here's the Brownie, and I do believe more or less he is up and down for a superb spectacle of cliff diving. Another platter of first class cliff diving in my a very, opinion. very good platter. I mean, this. I'm expecting some pretty big scores from the judges, but the. Man, this is just outstanding. I mean, there's almost nothing wrong with it. The jump, the twist, everything's in line. He didn't lose his form. Boom. He's up and down. Oh, unreal. I, I don't, I've got nothing to say. I can't really critique the dive at all because everything just looks easy. I mean, how does someone do a dive like this and make it look like that? This is like a walk in the park for him, but it's not the first person in the world to do this dive. But I am so, so curious to see what the scores will be from the judges. Gary Hunt going down as one of the greatest legends in the cliff diving scene. Seven Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series titles behind his name, and that is why, time and time again, handling the pressure, high degree of difficulty, and the scores from the judges. Making it wow! Easy tens across the board by all five judges. That's a record, five tens in a row from the judges. Massive dive, oh my lord. And look at that, Gary Hunt, typical, just kind of cruising along in the boat. And look at Kulturi just going, what, what? what happened? I mean, uh, I just pounded my dives and I can't win the competition. He Gary Hunt. Is impressed. Wow. Oh, right. <laughs> he just, I think he said it's not even fair anymore. <laughs> what Gary a Hunt setting records here in Beirut and the first time that this beautiful city has held a Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series has just witnessed history and has just witnessed greatness. Wow. And he just also broke the record for the highest scoring time, 156 points. And that was previously held by Stephen Lobu with 147.90. Gary Hunt, look at that, 156. He doesn't even know what to say about himself. No, he doesn't. How good am I? Hey, <laughs> hey, well, hey, well, that was pretty good. Yeah, Gary, you should be pretty proud of yourself. <laughs> Look at David. I think David's giving a mouthful right now. Just saying, what are you give doing me, to me, me man? One. What are you doing to give me? me? <laughs> Gary Hunt. <laughs> Look at the conversation. <laughs> but, you know, these guys are great friends. But, uh, yeah. you know, David Couture really pushed Gary. But Gary came up trumps. Wow. <laughs> this is just, I mean, this is a competition just full of records. I've never Ever seen an event like this? Look at and this. And under the circumstances, with the conditions, with the elements, with the heat, yes, with the waves, exactly. with the swells, Gary Hunt once again absolutely drills it, nails it. 369.50. Huge props to David Colturi of the United States. Second place getting back on the podium after a surgery less than a year ago. And Catalan Preta, we talk about him being a threat he's in the mix grabs bronze yeah that's his second third place finish his first one in bosnia castle and preda job well done and when he knows how to fine tune his entry look out for him all right well that was an unbelievable competition and again the folks here in lebanon witnessing greatness witnessing records gary hunts doing the rounds unbelievable 38th career victory and once again, has nearly won half the events since he's entered in 2009. So there you have it, Gary Hunt with 800 points. It's going to be tough to beat with two stops left and only 600 points off the table. He's basically going to have to miss his flight <laughs> to <laughs> Bosnia and Herzegovina. But look at that. Uh, now Bratil in fourth. Jones moves into that third place spot. I mean, not moves into it, but stays in third. Johnny Paredes, though comfortably in second, not tied with Jones anymore. David Colturi launches up into fifth place with 310. And Preta, the Romanian diver, doing a great job there. And Konstantin Popovici, you see him in 11th. He will make a comeback after his injury. So we will see him in Bosnia.
and Herzegovina at our next stop, which is stop number six. So a great day here on the Pigeon Rocks in Rauche, the beautiful neighborhood here in Beirut. Excellent competition here in Lebanon and them doing a fantastic job for the first time ever hosting a Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and making the stage perfect for Rihanna Nifland of Australia. Winning dive here, Joey. This is almost a replica of every single inward triple somersault I've seen in the fourth and final round of the women. Just three rounds here today at this competition, but talk about consistency and strength. I mean, maybe in the future we might see some more difficult dives from her. Also breaking the record with uh, round two with that incredible back triple somersault with two twists. A deserved win for Rihanna Nifland today. 16th victory in her short career on the World Series. Her 20th podium. Unbelievable. Fodor Spazov, the diver, the coach, boyfriend, right there. Ifland, 30615 with the gold. Ariana Jimenez, tell you what, after that first round dive and record breaking score in the first round in second, Yana Natsirava and the young Iris Smidbauer, as we talked about, making a move here on the overall points. And look at that, just by 0.10, she just missed that third place position. All right. There you go, there's your top 10, and the winner, Rhiannon Ifland. Let's head down to the water with David O'Queeve. David. I'm down here with Rhiannon, and another win under the belt. Here in a new location, what was it like diving in Beirut? Actually, it was really enjoyable diving here in Beirut. Uh, the, the weather conditions were, uh, again, challenging for us divers, but uh, it was mind over matter, and we couldn't ask for, you know, warm weather, so um, that was super nice. Absolutely. Well, you have prevailed once again. And with another win, that title series is within the touching distance. How are you going to deal with the pressure going into the final two stops? Um, you know, I actually don't mind the pressure. Um, I think there's there's two ways to take pressure. You know, one is, is to let it affect you, or the other way you can take it on and flip it around into positive energy. So that's what I'm going to try and do, and I'm just going to continue my diving as per usual. Okay, well, congratulations, and thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Josh. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Rhiannon, the three-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion, Rhiannon Nifland, another victory and putting her far in the lead with the overall series points, putting her in contention for yet another King Kai Keeley Trophy here in the year 2019. All business for Rhiannon Nifland, huh? Absolutely rock steady and focused. She did a Fantastic job reading the swells and the seas, diving at the right time, exquisite stuff. Sun is setting over the beautiful cliffs here in Beirut, and it's a great setting having that natural rock face mm -hmm. in the city. All the crowds can gather around and watch the cliff diving elite. These are the world's best cliff diving athletes, and uh, a record-breaking day here in Beirut. One to be remembered, in my opinion, Trace Worthington. No question about it. The fans loving it here in the capital city of Lebanon very rich in history and a lot of history of diving and jumping off of the pigeon rocks as well uh just from the locals yeah dates, dates, i met a guy the other day a long time ago yeah, he's talking about his grandfather actually diving off the cliff and i actually did see a guy actually believe it or not with one yeah, leg i saw that video diving off the the top of the cliff face i mean uh, he went head first not highly recommended <laughs> well, he can only do that once but yana nestriava job well done making the podium again this year so She's... second in portugal yeah and then there was a third place finish as well another third place here she's quiet she's shy but deadly when it comes to competition Yana Natsirava earning bronze women's prize giving ceremony also with the back injury so once again she mm. did not do any practice dives whatsoever to conserve the injury and uh, to dive that well with an injury like that is uh, well hats off we salute you yeah, look at that <laughs> cheeky <laughs> smile from Adriana Jimenez taking the podium for the second time this year she was in the fight for the King Kai Kili Trophy last year, so ended up second overall and second here today in Beirut, Lebanon, looking very happy, proudly waving the Mexican flag.
Liverpool, Mexico. Adi Jimenez, silver in Beirut. By the way, the city voted the must-visit city for 2019 by World Tourists. And Joey, after you and I took a spin around the city, I get why. Oh, it's a nice place. And here we go, Rihanna Niflin, once again, dominant. There we go, fellow Aussie, 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 here we go. We'll hear the national, uh, the national anthem once again for her. top three women here in Beirut with two stops left. Rihanna Nifland campaigning for her fourth Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series King Ka Keeley Trophy. Time to celebrate. It's been a long day with all the practice diving, zip lining across the cliff face yeah. into the position and well deserved all of the women competing here today should be very, very proud of themselves for managing the conditions. Sip of champagne as the sun sets over Beirut, Lebanon. Couldn't think of anything finer. Mm -mm. So Rian and Iflan will celebrate. Focus on the next stop, Bosnia and Herzegovina off the old bridge in the beautiful village of Mostar. And now the men will take their turn on the prize giving and Catalin Pereta. I think, I think we're going to be talking about him quite a bit. He stays healthy, Joey. Fantastic stuff. I mean, he's got the technical background behind him, so all he needs now is just a little bit of fine-tuning, so very, very proud of him. Yeah. And David Couturi, he's battled through so many injuries over the years, and you can see a big smile on his face. He's still going to give a bit more stick to Gary Hunt for pushing him off the number one slot. David Couturi earning, earning the Joey call of the first-class platter of cliff diving. He deserved it. All right, let's head back down to the water. Yet another proud day for Gary Hunt. Increasing his statistics has not missed one single competition in the Rebel Fifth Diving World Series. And gentlemen, you may celebrate. <laughs> Wonderful. Gary Hunt, 35 years old, a very unassuming character is on his way to winning his eighth Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series King Kai Keeley Trophy with two stops left. Speaking of which, next, it promises to be just as exciting 
when the World Series heads 2,700 kilometers northwest from here in Beirut, when stop number six of the World Series returns to Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina, where the divers will once again launch off the famous Starry Most, otherwise known as the old bridge into the crystal clear Neritva River and the fine and fine art and tradition, excuse me, of cliff diving dates back to the 17th century off that old bridge. And today, Joey, the respect and ritual continues as it will be center stage for the world's best on August 24th, 12.30 p.m. GMT. Joey and I will be there calling it live. We hope you join us. It's going to be fun. It will be. There's a fantastic cliff diving history in Mostar, the most fanatical crowds we've ever seen. So stay tuned for that competition. It's going to be a hot one. Well, it's time to wrap things up from here in Rauche, Beirut, and the spectacular Pigeon Rocks. Excellent work, by the way, from the local Red Bull team hosting the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series for their first time. Congrats to all. Trace Worthington, Joey Zuber, David O'Queeve, and the rest of our team saying thanks for watching and goodbye from Lebanon. So take flight. Surprise.